hi everybody and welcome to gt coding in this video we will start designing this ai image generator using the open ai api and for the back end we're going to use node.js and we're going to use express for creating the server and for the front end we will use simple html css and javascript so first of all let me just give you a demo of this application so here we can see we have this input field here you can simply go ahead and enter the description of the image that you want to be generated now if I just click on this generate button without entering any prompt then we'll just get this alert and you can also go ahead and create a notification that will be displayed instead of this alert. I have just added the alert to make everything simple but right now you can go ahead and add a prompt so I'll just type something over here. So I'll just type man waiting for the bus in rain and let's click on generate image. And here we have this image generated by the AI for this prompt. And if you want to create another image, you can just click on this generate image button once more. And now we have a different image. And if you want to download this image, you can just click on this download button. And we can see that the image was downloaded. And if I click on this image, here we can see that the image is indeed downloaded. Now you can also add different styles over here for this image. So here if I just type watercolor and uh, let's click on generate image now we can see we have the image in the style of watercolor painting so this is basically how the app is gonna work now in this video we'll just create the ui using html css and javascript and in the next video i'll show you how to create the server using node.js and express so let's get started Right here I have created this folder called AI image generator. Now we're going to create the front end inside a different folder and we're going to create the server inside a different folder. So let's create a new folder over here and I'll just call it client. You can name this anything you want. Now let's go ahead and create the HTML file. So let's click on new file and let's tap index.html and let's also create a CSS file. I'll just name it style.css and we also need to have a JavaScript file. Let's name it main.js and let's start with the index.html file so in vs code you can just press exclamation and press tab and you will have this basic html5 code and here let's link our css file so i'll just type link and press tab and here in the href i'll just type style.css and let's also link the javascript file so i'll just create a script tag and in the src i'll just type main.js right now let's start with the markup of our design so the first thing we will do is we'll create a container division and let's give it a class of image generator container and in that we need to have a heading so I'll just tap h1 and here we'll just type dial e image generator now for dial e we need to have a different styling so i'll just add this inside a span and we'll just give it a class so i'll just tap span and let's give it a class of dali e. and i'll just cut the span ending tag from here and paste it over here right now the next thing we need to have is uh, the input field the generate button and the image so for that let's create a container division and let's give it a class of content and let's create an input field and we'll set the type to text and let's also give it a class so that we can style it in css so i'll just type prompt input and let's also give it a placeholder and we'll just type enter your prompt here right now let's create the button for generating the image so i'll just create a button tag and here i'll just tap generate image and let's also give it a class so just tap class and i'll just set the class to generate btn right now let's create the image and for the image i'll just create a container division and let's give it a class of image container and in that i'll just create an img tag let's also give it a class so let's set the class to generated image and by default we need to have a placeholder image as the source so i'll just copy some images to this folder All right so here i have copied this folder and in that we have these two images this is for the image which shows when we are generating the image and this is the placeholder image so let's add this placeholder image to the source so here let's type images forward slash image placeholder dot png now the last thing we need to have is the download button so for the download button let's create an anchor tag and let's give it a class of download btn 
and for the text we need to type download now we also need to have an icon for the download button so here we can see we have this icon over here on the left side so let's create a span for that and let's give it a class of icon and here we will use an icon from heroicons.com all right so here i'm in heroicons.com and uh, let's search for download and let's copy this icon from here so i'll just click on copy svg and let's go back and let's paste it over here inside the span and now let's open this in our browser and let's see how it looks so here I have this extension called live server installed in VS Code. Once you have that installed, you can just right click over here in the HTML and click on open with live server. And this is how it looks right now. And uh, we have all these elements. We also have the icon and uh, the download text down here. Right now, let's go ahead and style this using CSS. So let's go back to our code. And here we have already linked our CSS file. So let's go to the style.css file. And first of all, let's select everything and uh, let's set the box sizing to border box so that we have the correct padding and margin. And let's set the font family to Poppins and sans serif. Now, if you go back to our design, this is how it looks. Right now, let's go ahead and select the body and uh, we will set the background color of the body to F7, F7, FF. And let's set the color of all the text to 0A2342. Right now, let's target the container division, which is uh, this division with the class of image generator container. Let's type image generator container. And let's set a max width of 400 pixels. And let's also bring it to the center. So I'll just type margin and zero for top and bottom and auto for left and right. Now the content is in the center. Right now, let's style this heading. So the heading is basically an H1. So let's type image generator container H1. And let's set the font size to 28 pixels. Now for this word dial E, we need to have a different styling. So here we can see we have a different styling. And we had already added a span for that. And we have this class dial E. So let's access that. Here I'll just type image generator container H1 dial E. And for this, I'll just set the color of the text to white. And let's set the background color to this dark color. And we also need to have some padding. So I'll just type padding. And a zero for top and bottom and eight pixels for left and right. Right now, let's style this content. So here we can see we have this division with the class of content. And in that we have the input field, the button and the image. So let's type content. And let's set the display to flex. And uh, let's set the flex direction to column. And let's also add some gap between the elements. So I'll just set the gap to eight pixels. Right now, let's style the input field and the button. So let's target both the elements. So I'll just type content. And for the input field, we have this uh, class of prompt input. So I'll just type prompt input. And let's also target the generate button, which has this class of generate BTN. So let's type content, generate BTN. And let's set the padding to 8 pixels top and bottom and 24 pixels left and right and let's set the font size to 16 pixels and uh, let's set the border to none and uh, let's add a box shadow and let's set the values to 0 4 pixels 30 pixels negative 8 pixels rgba 0 0 0 and 0 0.1 for the opacity and let's also add a rounded corner so I'll just a border radius and uh, let's set the value to 8 pixels Right now, let's add some more styling to this button. So I'll just type content and generate BTN. And let's set the background color to 2B4570. And let's set the color of the text to white. And let's set the cursor to pointer. And we'll set the font weight to bold. And we also need to have a hover effect. So here we can see when we hover over this, we have the color changing to a dark color. So for that, let's type content generate btn colon hover and let's add a background color of this dark color right here and let's add a smooth transition so i'll just type transition and i'll just set the value to all 400 milliseconds is and now if we hover over this we can see that we have the hover effect right now let's set some fixed size for this image so for the image we have this container division with a class of image container 
So let's target that. Here I'll just type image container and let's set the width and the height to 400 pixels. And now let's target the image tag inside this division. So let's type image container img and for this we'll set the width and the height to 100% of the parent which is image container. And let's also set the object fit to cover so that it has the correct proportions. Right now the last thing we need to do is style this download button. So for the download button we have this uh, anchor tag with a class of download btn. So let's type download btn. And uh, first of all let's set the display to flex so that the image is on the left side and the text on the right side. So let's type display of flex. And now we need to set a width for the icon. Now for the icon we have this span with a class of icon. So let's type download btn icon. And let's set the width to 20 pixels. And now we have the icon visible. Right now let's keep styling this download button. Right, let's add some gap between the icon and the text. So I'll just type gap. And I'll just set it to 8 pixels. And let's set the background color to 082342. And let's set the color of the text to white. And uh, we'll set the width of the button to fit content. And let's also add some padding. So I'll just type padding. And let's set the padding to 4 pixels top and bottom and 16 pixels left and right. And let's remove the underline. So I'll just type text decoration and let's set it to none. And let's also add a border radius. So I'll just type border radius and let's set it to 8 pixels. And let's set the font size to 13 pixels. And let's set the text transform to uppercase. Now we want the text to be aligned vertically in the center. So let's type align items to the center. And let's add some margin to the top. So I'll just type margin top and let's set it to 8 pixels. And I think that looks all right. And with that, we have completed designing the UI of our application. Now, in the next video, I'll show you how to create the backend of this application using Node.js and Express. So that's basically it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.